This is Earl Smith and Bryce Villa from the Open Mat. We're here Saturday morning, All-American Round from PPG Paints Arena. Uh, we're going to recap some of the action from yesterday in the semifinals as well as make our predictions for the finals. We'll start at 125 pounds. We saw the top seed Sebastian Rivera go down to Jack Mueller. Mueller had over five and a half minutes of riding time. Uh, you know, what did you think about that match, Bryce? Uh, Jack Mueller is just an awful matchup for anyone in this weight class. He's strong, he is big, and he is athletic. He's everything you want in a college wrestler, and he's selfless. I mean, they needed a guy in the lineup. He said, fine, I was gonna take a year off, I was gonna train freestyle. He came back and has just been dominating uh, this whole bracket. He took out Roddy Bresser, who was kind of that dark horse guy people were talking about more than even Jack Mueller. Um, and now he gets to run into a, a buzzsaw. I mean, Spencer Lee, he's done what he does at the national tournament, which is win matches that you maybe think he wasn't gonna. He took out, in a revenge match, Nick Piccinini, uh, 11 to 4. I mean, the late takedown in, in four back points uh, when it looked like Piccinini just couldn't finish a shot, kind of slipped a little bit. That put Lee in the finals. What do you think about Lee? What do you think about this matchup? Um, I mean, it's really interesting because nobody has been able to ride uh, Sebastian Rivera like that. Um, you know, Lee had some problems earlier in the year on the mat. Looks like it's uh, probably resolved at this point, but uh, it's still an intriguing matchup. Um, I'm going to go with the underdog. Uh, you know where I'm from, so I'm going to say Jack Mueller. Winners win. Spencer Lee's a winner. And that's not even a homer pick. I mean, I picked him in my bracket uh, as soon as they came out. And I thought he was going to be doing it from the fourth or fifth seed. Mm -hmm. I think he, he was overseeded. Um, where he was at. I still thought he made his way through the finals, but yeah, I'm sticking with my guy I picked to start. Not that Mueller isn't on my fantasy mm -hmm. wrestling team. I, he was my pick. All right, we're going to move to 133. Um, this was a funny weight class all year. Very deep. Lots of guys that were capable of upsets, but we saw the quarters with all eight guys advancing to the quarters. The semis had one, two, three, and five. So it actually played out accordingly on the top. Uh, Dayton Fix gets an early takedown, throws the boots in, lots of riding time, and uh, he moves on over Luke Pletcher. Um, you know, what do you think about Fix? Um, I, I want to be a believer because um, he wins. And so what did I just say? Winners win. But he, 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 he misses that killer instinct. And when he has been tested in a long battle, he struggles a little bit. And that being said, he had one loss this year and it was a very controversial loss. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I like Fix. I mean, I like the way he wrestles, uh, but I, I'm not a believer yet. Once he raises his hand for a national title, I'll be like, okay, yeah, this was the right decision. Um, but it is what it is on that one. What have we been waiting for, for Rutgers, for how many years? A Ever? finals? Forever. Forever. The history, they get, they get uh, their first finalist, you know, two weight classes in at 133. Um, Nick Suriano, um, he took out this Stabon, Stabon Michik, um, what, four to one, and got out from under him, and that's a big thing. Getting out from under Michik compared to getting out of fix, I mean, that's got to give you some confidence going forward. I would think so, and you know, before the tournament, my pick was fix over Suriano in the final. However, after watching both, uh, I think I'm going to have to switch to Suriano. You think you think that's the way it's going to be? I think so. I think he's going to do it for uh, Coach Scott Goodale. I think on on, on the backside, the one thing you can talk about is, is DeSanto getting it done. Mm -hmm. um, I think we could put this weight class and wrestle it ten more times and have eight, more, nine more different raw, raw finishing on that one. I agree with that. Jump over to 141. Did he get tested? I thought Diak Malas got tested. He got but tested. But Ironman is an awful matchup for him. Mm -hmm. When, you're, when you shoot the way that Yanni does and build up and that kind of stuff, when you're wrestling a, a really tough scrambler like Ironman, who keeps great position, is always looking for those, those little cuts, but he got it done, 6-5. He did, and uh, you know, he, Ironman had a great low leg attack, uh, takedown with that, but you know, Yanni has had his number lately, and you, know, you said winners win, he's in the finals again. We have Joey McKenna, first time in the finals. Which is incredible to me. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's, he's been third place finisher twice. He's had success on the world level. And uh, now another matchup with Yakima Hollis. They wrestled at the end of the season. And uh, Yanni got it, obviously, since he's undefeated with the one seed. And uh, I had picked McKenna at the beginning of the tournament just because I thought it's a you know senior. He's going to go out on top. Uh, but 
Yanni looks really good. I, I'm gonna go with Yanni. As much as I want to pick McKenna, every time you speak with this young man, uh, you, you get team, you get family, you get faith, and it's not an act. It, it is exactly who this kid is. Um, he's done it right. Dom Demas, gonna be wrestling, guy, wrestling like for no worse what? than six, no worse than six. And when you look at where he came from this year, you know we weren't really talking about him, weren't really talking about him. I think the first time people started talking about him was two inside trips against Cade Rock to win the title in the Big 12. But that was kind of, that's my big story on this one. I'm a big fan. And Lockhaven getting Shoop in mm -hmm. as an All-American. Yeah, they're going to have two this year with more stellar and Shoop. That's right. Um, going up to 149, we have one verse two. It's a Big Ten Finals rematch. Uh, Anthony Ashnall, he had another one of those uh, inner jersey matchups in the semis over Kladzik. Um, you know, there wasn't anything notable last time he majored him. And uh, this time it was much closer, but he still dominated it 2 nothing. Um, you know, so is he going to be the first champ for Rutgers, Soriano? I mean, I think they could they could have two. I mean, they that's could. what go from go from not having a single champion to having two in one year is is incredible for these guys. Um, and I said something to Ashnall yesterday about you know going down as the best hit wrestler in Rutgers history. I said, oh well, you know, Soriano's you know right you know chasing me down. I'm like, yeah, but you've been here for you know you put your time in your four years, um, five point six years actually for him. It <laughs> seems like I'm on the backside. You know, fine silver. The fine silver's in there. Yeah. yeah, Mitch. You know, I thought I, I I did pencil him into the finals on my bracket. I um, did as well. I, I liked well. the draw he had, and then Lugo for Iowa getting one. So we had the, what a tenth seed. You know, was, you know, was really the only one that kind of came out at this way. Um, Nick Lee. I mean, Nick Lee was. Oh, I'm sorry on that one. Uh, 49 Bergy was. That was a big thing when they lost him on the backside. I thought Penn State might have been, might have been a little vulnerable for Ohio State to chase down. But things changed pretty quickly when we flip the page and go to 157. <laughs> oh, so that's the match that everybody's talking about, the semifinal. It was an NCAA Finals rematch from last year. Jason Nolf, Hayden Heidley. Uh, what do you think about the call? Um, I, the, end, the call at the end didn't bother me. Yeah. That's, I have no problem with that. Yeah. The call where they completed, he went to his hip and came up. Um, I don't know if they didn't have any more reviews left to throw, if they were out of bricks. Um, but it, does that change the? It changes the dynamic of that match at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Um, but it, this is where I started to look at the. Obviously, Penn State is still kicking the crap out of the field. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at individual matchups, guys started to close the gap uh, against wrestlers who had beaten them badly before. The exception, of course, is Bo Nickel. Yeah. Because nobody's going to close that gap. <laughs> but you saw that, and you saw that at every weight class that people are starting to close the gap on those individual, you know, spaces. That that, that individual gap between you know Hall and White you know they're mm -hmm. jo Joseph and White and Hall you know I mean they, they've closed that gap on the on the south side of the bracket there Caleb Young the sixth seed in the semifinals taken on Tyler Berger who only cares about one match and that's the that's next right. match but he cared enough to get past Caleb Young good leg attacks attack attack so we have a one versus two yeah that's that's the match you want to see it this way I think I, I I don't know. Are you gonna are you are you staying on the Null train? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not jumping off. Um, you know, Hydley wrestled him pretty tough in the finals last year. Maybe it was a knee injury. You know, the lingering knee injury. But uh, it probably is just a bad style matchup. What was it? Intermat said like 150 or like 200 brackets were filled out, and like 149 people picked. Dolphin. There was one person that picked Tyler Berger, so we knew that Tyler Berger was picking an Intermat bracket at that point. <laughs> Go to 165. You've got to be happy about this. Makai Lewis, the eight seed freshman from Virginia Tech, first Virginia Tech freshman in the finals. Um, he took out Alex Mirinelli in the quarterfinals, Evan Wick in the semis. You know, he just has incredibly quick reshots, uh, quick go behinds. Um, you know, he's something else, junior world champion, and now he has a two time NCAA champion uh, to try to upset and uh, you know, run the table of all these studs. Well, and that's, that's what makes this even more impressive, coming for us the eighth seed, because that was the tougher side of the bracket. Um, I think a lot, even if you were an Iowa homer, when you looked at that side of the bracket, you went, if any number one seed is going to lose, even before the, you know, the finals, it was Alex Marinelli, when you saw that draw. Vincenzo Joseph taking out Josh Hills three to two. I mean, they again, another wrestler that has wrestled, you know, a Penn State wrestler before, and it wasn't close. But this time they closed that gap, but Joseph was in control, yeah. really, for, from start to finish there. But he wasn't able to open up like we've seen him in the past. And I think that's a big deal. I, I, I want to pick Lewis. I know you are. I want to pick Lewis, but I can't. Because Joseph has been there twice. 
and hasn't been favored either time when you think about who he beat. Yeah. Isaiah Martinez, Isaiah Martinez. I I'm gonna go with Joseph. I'll go with the homer pick and Lewis. I I'm proud of you to stay in with him. I really am. All right, so we have, we're gonna do it all over from last year, 174. Mark Hall, Zaheed Valencia. Um, Hall got by Amin in tiebreakers two to one. Um, I don't know, it wasn't a notable match in really any front as far as the, the top half of the bracket. No, and they've wrestled so many times. 3-2, 3-2, 3-2, 3-2. Um, um, I am not a fan uh, on any level of tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. um, I think riding time advantage at the end, you know, that changes how people wrestle. Um, you know, if you can make it there with one stalling call, you know, it, I don't like it. I mean, sometimes it's the guy that got there without a stalling call that wins simply because they can hang on the leg longer. But Mark Hall does what Mark Hall does, and that's yeah. win and get into the finals three times in three years. And then you had Zahid Valencia, who we were worried about coming into the tournament, a couple losses, mm -hmm. um, taking on Daniel Lewis, who might be arguably the strongest person in the world, <laughs> pound for pound. That guy is a machine. He is genius level intelligent. I mean, I mean, he, he is everything you want in your program if you're in your Missouri. And there were some people worried about this matchup, and then he came out and majored him 11 to three. And you talk about genius level. I thought that Valencia's game plan, his attacks were excellent, well planned out. He was avoiding anything that would put him in that cradle position, which Lewis is famous for. I think he's pinned everybody else in the tournament in cradles. And uh, you know he was able to avenge a, a pin loss to a major decision. You know, when you when you saw him, Valencia, I think it was in the second period when he Lewis took top, mm -hmm. and Valencia literally just survived. And you, you you look at that period and go, holy crap, he still majored him 11 to three when that period went all Lewis's way because Zahid was just fighting off that cradle. Mm -hmm. um, trying to look on the back side there if that was what I was looking for. Uh, Nebraska again, Nebraska had a good tournament. Mm -hmm. When you go back and look at where they're sitting, they had a much better tournament than I thought they would. But Labriola, I mean, he has a chance to wrestle third or fourth against Miles Amin, and that's another Big Ten yep. type matchup that's going to be fun to watch. So 184, it's just how we drew it up in the brackets. Number five, Max Dean takes out Miles Martin, gives him first loss of the year. This was another one where they've met before. Mm -hmm. It was kind of ugly decision, major decision. I think uh, the last time they met, Dean's able to reverse it, uh, comes out, gets a late takedown to win it, and you know, shocks the entire place. Well, I thought Miles Martin came out and like within the first 15 seconds finished the takedown, looked like, all right, I'm gonna be cruising along. And then he hit a wall. Mm -hmm. And that wall was Max Dean. And I, I I was I was surprised by this, truly. I mean, I definitely had Dean as an All-American and possibly in that four, three range. But yeah, what a, what a match. And then, of course, you have Drew Foster, a guy that never won a state championship, not really recruited, a um, little, I, you know, from Iowa, wrestling for you and I, went to wrestle for Doug Schwab as the sixth seed, taking on who we knew was gonna be in the semifinals, you know, Chip Ness, the 15 seed from <laughs> UNC, because we yeah. had that. Yeah. Um, it was a good match, and Foster just controlled it. Yeah, and he, he has uh, been thriving from the top game. He got points there, and, uh, you know, some of the, our Iowa friends were warning me about, you know, Foster's going to make a run. You know, he had a favorable matchup with the three seeds of Atsky, who has mm -hmm. a great history against, and uh, you know, he's going to try to close it out and become the first champion for you and I since Tony Davis. Yeah, which I can't believe when you look at the guys that are there. Um, Doug Schwab could very, you know, could very really have his first national champion, which is another tough thing for me to think mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Um, I want to see what happens when that, when that happens. Hey, you um, think you might be excited? Yeah. Um, I, I hope, but something to keep an eye on is, is the one versus four wrestling in the uh, conference, or in the Constellation semifinals when Emery Parker takes on Miles oh, Martin. Martin. Is Martin going to battle back for the team? He has to. Yeah, he, I, I feel like he's going to he's gonna be one of these guys that either, you know, Tet falls or majors people the next two match on the way to third. And as far as my pick goes, I'm going with Foster. All the way. I'm going to go with Foster there. Before we get on the top, let's look at the back. Fresno State has an All-American, and he's yes. not done yet. Yes. He's in the Constellation semifinals. I mean, Hockett is, I mean, how great for that program. I mean, and this guy, he played in a bowl game in December and maybe 10 days later, goes out and places at the Reno Tournament of Champions. A couple weeks later, beats Willie Nicholas. I mean, this guy is remarkable. You know, and he's what, the 16th seed, so under the old rules, he would have been the last guy seeded. Mm -hmm. But yeah, well, congratulations to him. And then the other great story this way, Willie Nicholas. 
Uh, well, everyone, it, it, we've talked about the tragedy. If you follow, you know, moving back to Iowa to, to be with his ailing father, passed away here at the end of the season, going out, you know, being a Big 12 finals, you know, going, you know, being an All-American after taking an early loss. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, what a great story, you know, and now he's got Preston Weigel to, to, to continue to advance, but it's still an incredible story for, for a dresser who had, what, scored two points last year, Iowa yeah. State, I think two points, and now they have two All-Americans. I mean, what a great turnaround. Go to the top, though. Let's yeah. talk about. Let's talk about okay. the guy that everyone should be talking about. All right, Bo Nickel against Colin Moore. This is going to be our last match of the night. Um, this is going to be a rematch of the Big Ten Finals. They wrestled in a dual meet. Nickel pins him in the first period. Um, they wrestled in the finals for the Big Tens, and it was like a seven. -two. You know, it was it was a decision, but it was just one of those things. Bo Nickel has gone fall, fall, major decision, fall. That's. That's Hodge to me. I, I would agree with that as well. Uh, he, he's been incredible, and Moore just dominated, I, dominated Preston Weigel. Did you see that kind of that kind of uh, beating happening? No, actually, in my uh, recap of the quarterfinals, I said let's not go planning a nickel Moore final just yet, because I thought Weigel looked really good, and it was going to be a great match. You're not, you're not the only one. We <laughs> both did that. That did not go like I drew it up at all. But two years ago. He majored Weigel at this tournament, so um, we're going to move to heavyweight. Um, top half of the bracket, it was Derek White in sudden victory over Jordan Wood. Um, you know, it was kind of what you expect out of a heavyweight match. Uh, we got spoiled with the Kyle Snyders of the world the past couple years. Um, you know, White is, he has one loss on the year. Um, he has beaten his finals opponent Anthony Kassar from Penn State who I mean he had uh, another win over Gable Steves and he beat him in the Big Ten finals and he does it again you know tell me about you know what you thought of it, it's head scratching to me um, and maybe it's because they're freshmen mm -hmm. um, when you come out and you get a takedown and then you take your foot off the gas mm -hmm. I mean a guy that is a world-level athlete like he he is and has competed on the international stage should understand that you can't take your foot off the gas mm -hmm. because people are going to come back at you. I mean the high level athletes, uh, you know, it used to be on the international stage the Americans would were the group that came back. Now it seems like they're kind of the guys trying to hang on and that's what Gable Stevenson looked like. Looked like he was just going to hang on. He could have he could have just lifted him and pushed him out over and over again and he would have walked away with that. Kassar, give him, he uh, did a great job of, uh, 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 of staying patient, mm -hmm. staying with his game plan, and much to the chagrin of about 60 to 70 percent of the fans in the stadium, he won. He did. What do you, what do you think? What's going to go on here? You got White and Kassar. Um, I'm going to go with Kassar. You know, he, he got these two wins over Gable. Um, you know, White hasn't looked overly impressive. He's had a lot of close matches throughout the tournament, 5-2. Uh, 3-1 in the quarters, and you know, 3-1 in the semis. Um, you know, I'm going to go with Kassar. You know, I, 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 I've got to go with White. He was my pick before. Um, he hasn't opened it up like you know he can. Yeah. And I think at this point, uh, they're gonna, they might be feeling the pre pressure depending on how this round goes. I mean, they're in third right now. They're five points up, mm -hmm. I believe, on Iowa. They might be feeling the pressure, and I think you're going to see some guys perform. Mm -hmm. And are gonna, it's going to make a difference. What's your one thing you're going to take away from the first couple days? Um, well, I, w I was surprised that Iowa, or not Iowa, Penn State did not run away with the title like we all thought. You know, Ohio State really, uh, you know, hung in there, and they had some bonus points where you didn't necessarily see them coming. Uh, you know, Iowa jumped out to a great start, so um, you know, the team aspect is what I was focusing on over the past day or so. What's crazy about this is. Penn State's only going to finish with one more All-American than Iowa, and they're going to probably almost double them up in points. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that, that's what I'm taking away from this. That's there is. Crazy.